guys, it's Charlie. I hope you're all well. So as you can see, I'm sitting in a different surrounding today, and that's because this video is going to be a little bit different. Um, you can probably tell from the title it's going to be about anxiety. Um, I know I spoke a bit about it before, and you might be a bit bored about hearing, you know, about this subject. But um, like I've said before, it's something that you know I'm so um, passionate about, and I want to help other people. Um, and so I wanted to do this video to sort of talk a bit about my kind of journey with anxiety, I suppose, and also just some of the techniques that I use to help me in kind of overcoming it. Um, so I'll start, I suppose, by telling you a bit about my journey with it. So I started suffering with anxiety probably about 10 years ago now, I think I was about 12, um, and before that I'd been, you know, a pretty normal child, like, I wasn't really scared of anything, to be honest, really, I suppose, um, like, I would just get on with everything, I was a tomboy, I, like, I was always playing with all the boys, I never hung out with girls, I was always playing with boys, uh, always playing football, I played football since I was about three, and yeah, I just, I wasn't, I never used to really get worried about anything to be honest um and then when I was about 10 my dad had a allergic reaction to penicillin and it was a really 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 serious one we were told that he had about 20% chance of survival and I think that put into my brain that the world was dangerous and um at that point it didn't really stop me from really doing anything and then I started secondary school which was a huge like you'll know like when you've changed from primary school to secondary school it's a huge change like it's much bigger there's a lot more people and that was a huge shock to the system as well and at the same time as me starting my primary school I lost my granddad that I was really close to so that was another thing and then the final kind of straw in that, I think, was um, I went, it was the first time I went um, clubbing. And I was about 13, it was one of these, you know, like 13, 16 sort of things. Um, and it was at a nightclub, it was only about 20 minutes from my house. And <clears throat> I'd been feeling not very well all day. Uh, but I decided I still wanted to go, I didn't want to miss it, it was my first time going, so I went with my boyfriend at the time, and his friend, and his sister, and um, we got there, and I just started to feel worse, and I just said, like, I think I'm going to have to go home, and so I tried to find a phone so I could ring one of my family members to come and get me, because I didn't want to have to walk home, it was winter, it got dark early, it was pouring with rain, and so... Um, I, nobody, none of us had any credit, so I tried to use um, the little phone box that's inside the nightclub, that wasn't working, asked the security guys um, <clears throat> if I could use one of their phones, but they wouldn't let me, so I ended up, because they would have had to pay again if they'd have gone and came back, so I ended up having to walk home on my own in the rain and the dark and I was terrified I literally ran the whole way home I was I've never been so scared ever and I, I literally I ran all the way home and I didn't stop running until I got home and I was terrified and for me that was the final thing I needed in my brain to say that this world was a horrible dangerous place and then I started to be bullied pretty badly I was bullied um, at school and where I lived <clears throat> um, because I was a tomboy, I was always, oh, you're a lesbian. I'm not a lesbian, but it was, you're always a lesbian, and I'm short as well, so I got taken the mic out for that. I got people, I remember one maths lesson one day where this girl, she didn't even want to sit next to me, and I just remember thinking, what, what the hell did I ever do? Like, all I ever tried to do is be nice, and people don't even want to sit next to me, I just, I don't get it. And then I would come home from school, and... This girl where I lived, she would throw water over me, she would push me over, um, and I just, 
remember going in one night after she'd thrown water at me and just crying and just thinking, like, what have I ever done for these people to hate me so much? It must be me. And after that, I changed. Like, I would go to school and I wouldn't really talk to anybody. I wouldn't eat anything at lunchtime. But then when I come home, I would say to my mum, oh, yeah, I've eaten. I'm not really hungry. I don't want dinner. And then I just stopped eating completely. And I got down to about four and a half stone. And um, I was so weak. Um, and my family would... They went through every emotion just trying to get me to eat again. Cause, and it was also getting to the point where I didn't even want to drink. Which obviously is even more dangerous than not eating. And... Um, I just, I gave up on life really and then one day I um, collapsed in the kitchen, obviously through lack of food and stuff and my mum took me to the A&E and I was basically told that day that if I didn't go home and try to eat that I would be taken into hospital and force fed basically. Um, and by this time I'd missed about two years of school so I was too weak to go in. Um, and so I came home that day and somehow, somehow, I don't know if it's because I knew it was the right thing to do because I didn't want to die, I didn't want to have to go to hospital, I hate hospitals, that slowly I managed to make myself eat again. And I remember the first time that I tried to eat and it was like my teeth had forgot how to chew. It was like I had to, it was like I had to um, chain them again. I'm sorry, this is quite um, emotional, but... It was like I had to train them again, and it was the hardest thing ever. Um, but slowly I sort of began to get more energy, and I started to look better, because you could see, um, I haven't got a picture, but you could see um, like all the bones sticking out of my face. I had dark rings around my eyes. All because I'd come to the conclusion that everything was dangerous. Um... <clears throat> And it led me as well to having a huge fear of sick vomiting, um, which I think wasn't helping with food either. Um, and I had that for years. I had that actually until the beginning of this year where I suffered with the neurovirus. And that kind of helped me because I had no choice but to face it. But so I was suffering with that as well. And then, so I slowly started to sort of overcome that. I still didn't enjoy food, I still wasn't happy with it, but I started to slowly overcome that. I had counselling from a really great counsellor as well, who ended up leaving in the end, so I had to leave him, but he was amazing. And with him I managed to start doing that again. But it then left me, and this is what I still suffer with now, this overwhelming fear and anxiety of leaving my house. Um, and it's not because of kind of what is outside although I don't like really crowded places I get a bit with that but it's because um I have this thing this worry that something will happen to me while I'm out there again it's about the world being dangerous I suppose and um like I there were times where I wouldn't go out for months at a time like I just literally wouldn't go out at all anywhere I would just stay in bed because I felt safer, my friends would ask me to do things and I would say yes because I wanted to be able to with all my heart, I didn't want to miss out, like I missed out on all my teenage years and I, at the time I was I didn't want to and so I would say yes and then at the last minute I would cancel and they would get really annoyed with me because all they're seeing from the outside is somebody letting them down consistently but for me it wasn't that I wanted to, I wanted to do it more than anything but I was so frightened, this overwhelming fear that came over me was so frightening that I just, I couldn't, there was this block and I ended up, in the end, losing pretty much all of my friends. I only had about, I've had about five that have stuck with me through the whole journey and those are the ones, I, it, for me now, it's definitely quality over quantity. I think... You always want to be really popular, you always want to have loads of friends, but you end up realising that, you know, the ones that really matter you can actually count on one hand, and um, that that's kind of how it was for me. 
And um, yeah, so I ended up losing quite a lot of my friends. Um, let's have a drink. Um, yeah, I would end up. I ended up losing quite a lot of my friends, and at the time it hurt because all I wanted to do was make them understand. Like I wasn't doing it on purpose. I mean, one of my best friends I'd known for well since I was about three. Um, she was so horrible to me, um, like, I, I couldn't believe it, we'd been friends all that time, we'd been on holiday together, like, our families were friends, and then she was just so horrible to me, she didn't bother to ever come and see me, um, she became friends with this, this other boy, and it was like, I just didn't matter anymore, and I think that hurt more than anything, when you think that someone is such a good friend to you, and so I lost loads and loads of my friends, which really hurt, because with anxiety, if you suffer with anxiety, you'll know that you feel so alone. And when you're losing your friends as well, I mean, that just makes it even worse. And on top of that, people are doing all these exciting things and you're missing out. And life is so short anyway. And because you're so frightened, you're missing out on everything. And you're always the one that is sitting at home on their own, not being able to do anything, you always end up being that person, even though you don't want to be. Um, and I'm, like, I, during this time, I actually, I managed to, um, my family, I was just about to start counselling, and my family were like, you know, a holiday might do us good. So we went to Portugal, God knows how I got to the airport. I was screaming, cry I literally had to be dragged onto the aeroplane because I was in a terrible state. And I got there and I thought, oh, this is a huge thing, like, I'm going to be okay. But the holiday was horrendous because all I wanted to do was go home. I wasn't safe. Like, your, your house becomes your safe haven. Like, this is where you need to be to be safe. You always have to go to places that are close to here so you can come back. That's how it was for me or how it is for me sometimes still. And, um, so, yeah, and I still suffer with that. Now, obviously, I've grown up a lot now, and I know, like, not to let people get to you so much. I mean, it does get to you, because, especially when you're a nice person and all you've ever tried to do is nice, it's hard to understand why people would want to be so horrible. But you have to learn that there are horrible people in the world. The best thing to do is not let them show that it's bothering you. Because if you let them show that it's bothering you, you've lost, basically, already. And it's so hard, even if you want to go home and cry, go home and cry, but don't let them show that it's bothering you. You've got to be the stronger person. And it's the hardest thing in the world when people are being horrible to you and you feel like you've got nothing. But you've got to kind of feel sorry for them if they're spending that much time thinking about you. Do you know what I mean? You've got to kind of feel sorry for them, really, and say... Well, how sad you've got to spend all your time thinking about me and new ways to be horrible to me because you're feeling that bad about your life. And so I've I've grown up a lot since then, but I still struggle every day when I'm going to leave the house. Some days are worse than others. Like, I went out shopping the other day and I had a great day. The next day I tried to go out and I had a huge panic attack. So it's it swings and roundabouts. But you have to just remember to... You have to remember to be strong and that... Even though fear and anxiety are horrible, they can't kill you. They are just a feeling. And you, you are in control. However much it might feel like you're not, you are in control. Um, and panic, attack, I mean, panic attacks are horrendous. You get all the feelings like palpitations, pins and needles. You feel sick. You feel lightheaded like you're going to faint. You feel... Um, dizzy, you feel sweaty, you feel clammy, you feel shaky, you get the butterflies in your stomach, you know, you get the worst feelings, it can feel like you're having a heart attack, but you have to remember that that is all it is, they are feelings, they are feelings, and they can't stop you, because you are stronger than these feelings, fear is a snake with no venom, it is a snake with no venom, it can bite you, but it can't kill you. And if you have a bad day and you think, I can't do it today, don't think, well, that's it, I've lost, I'm never going to do it. You have to think, okay, it was a bad day. You may have won the battle today, but it hasn't won the war because tomorrow I'm going to get up and I'm going to fight again. 
And that's what you have to remember. You can't give up. And you have to say yes to things. When people say, oh, you know, do you want to do this? You have to say yes and you have to do it. Because by saying yes, you don't know what's going to happen. You'll probably have the best time ever. You, you know, you might meet new people. You might go to somewhere that's really amazing. You have such a great time. But by saying no, you know the only outcome is that you're going to feel miserable, you're going to feel ill, you're going to miss out again, and you're, you're, not, you're never going to get anywhere. So you have to say yes to things. You have to say yes, and you have to say, I'm going to do them, because I am worth doing them, because I deserve to do them. And that's what you have to remember. Say yes, because I am worth it. And I am never alone, because there are other people out there suffering the same as me, and I am going to do it because I deserve to do it. And there are lots of people that you can talk to. I'll put some websites and numbers and phone numbers and everything down below of people that you can talk to. I've had numerous counsellors. Um, I have said that counsellors didn't really work for me because I, apart from the first one that I had, the others weren't very good and they, they let me down. But it is good to talk to people. So don't think that because I had a bad experience, you will. It is so good to talk to people so good talking is a wonderful thing and you think how's talking going to help me but it really does it re even if it's just to make you realize that there are other people like you or to put a bit of that pressure that's on your shoulders onto somebody else's talking is a wonderful thing um also medications i tried two different types of anxiety medicines but they made me so ill that i just gave up on them as well again that's just me or thousands of people that take these medicines and they've changed their lives so again, everybody is different in the way they will deal with it. But the, the first thing that you have to do is admit that there is a problem. And doing it's like being an alcoholic and saying, I am an alcoholic. When you do that, you have, you have started and you can go the right way to finding the treatment that works for you. Now for me, there are a few things I find really beneficial. The first one is a good old fashioned paper bag. Um... Those of you will know with anxiety that you blow into a paper bag and it gives you back the oxygen that you're losing when you're having a panic attack or whatever. Um, plus you can also see when you're breathing, if I just show you. You can see your breath going in and out of the bag and that is really calming, like to watch your breath going in and out. And you can watch it like starting off fast and slowing down. And that's, I, ha I carry this in my bag, in my handbag, all the time, everywhere I go, I carry this with me. Who cares if you look like an idiot in public blowing into a bag? You know why you're doing it, that's what matters. So that, for me, is really beneficial. The other thing are herbal remedies. And I have two recipe remedies. I have a nighttime one, which looks like this. And this is if I've had a really anxious day and I'm finding it hard to sleep. And then I have this one, which again, I carry around in my bag with me. And I'll take a few drops before I'm going out. And it just calms you. It's all herbs. It's not any sort of medicine because I hate taking medicine. Like I get really scared about taking medicine because of side effects and stuff. So for me, this is perfect because I know it's got nothing in it that can harm me. And I just take... You just put... It's like this. And you just put... Um, looks like that. And you just put four drops on your tongue. And it just... It's like a little hands sort of rubbing you on the back and saying you're all right you're gonna be okay and um so that's those sorts of things are used they're really beneficial and they're cheap as well i think um so they're those sorts of things that i use um i have other techniques like um one that i also find really beneficial for me it is one that my counselor taught me and that is that you sing whatever you're afraid of or scared of or worried about you sing it to the tune of happy birthday and so like mine was six so i would sing i'm going to be sick i'm going to be sick i'm going to be sick and instead it makes you laugh about it which in turn makes your brain think it's a stupid thing rather than something to be terrified of so it sounds silly and you feel like an idiot at the time but that really really helps for me Obviously, breathing techniques, laying down um, on a flat kind of surface and 
starting from your toes, working all up to your head, you're going to cut everything else off and you start on your toes and you just feel everything in your toes. Every single thing you feel in your toes. And then you work all the way to your legs and all you can feel is your legs. And you feel everything you can feel on your legs. If you feel nothing, then you feel nothing, it doesn't matter. But the material of whatever you're wearing on your legs, the floor on your legs, all those sorts of things. Um, and that's and you work all the way up to your head until you're releasing it from your head. That's another good way then. Another way is um, breathing in, holding it for 10 seconds and breathing out. And that's the one I always say, breathe in strength, breathe out fear. Breathe in strength, breathe out fear. That's what I do. And um, also, swearing at it. <laughs> in your head, if you're out and you're feeling really bad, swear. Swear in your head at it bugger off, piss off, leave me alone, like I'm, I'm not going to let you win, you know, you have to get angry with it as well, which is another great way, there is also lots of amazing books, there's one in particular which is called Mindfulness, and you can, da you can buy it, but you can also download it on iBooks as well, so I'll put the link to that down below as well, that is a brilliant book, and there's also one called um, Anxiety for Dummies, now there's this big range of books for dummy books, and there's one called Anxiety for Dummies, which my auntie bought me. And it's absolutely incredible. It explains all the feelings you get with anxiety and panic and worry and all those things. And lots of different ways that you can beat it. And it's just, it's an incredible book. It's quite expensive because um, it's quite a big book. But, and I should have bought, I should have bought it with me actually to show you, but I haven't got the copy on me at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's... It's a really, really good book, so I'll put the um, Amazon link or the iBook link or whatever to it down below as well, so you can check that out. Um, and yeah, just really remembering to be strong. And because you have to remember that you deserve to be on this planet and have a life as much as anyone else. And to never give up, because while you're still breathing, while you're still breathing, there is every point. Because this isn't just a heartbeat. This is a purpose. It's a purpose. And while you've still got that purpose, there is every reason to not give up. Okay? You were put on this planet for a reason. You were put on this planet to live and to be happy, and you deserve to be. So you have to keep fighting, because nothing could stop you from doing what you want to do, particularly if all something in your brain. And it is the hardest thing in the world. And it's not something that is going to change overnight. But it is something that can change with strength, with courage. That's why I've got on my arm, I've got the word strength, which I have shown you before, it's really hard to show. But I've got the word strength. And that's what you need, that is the most important thing. Because you deserve to live. You shouldn't have to miss out on things. You shouldn't have to miss out on everything. And with strength, you don't have to. You have to just say yes. Yes, I can. Because I am alive, therefore I have a purpose. And I deserve to live. And that's it. So <laughs> I know this has been a bit of a um, kind of ranty video today and it's gone on for like 25 minutes. I'm really sorry. But I, I just, I really wanted to do this video and I hope you've taken, I hope you've taken um, something from this. Um, again, I'll put all my links down below, so if you want to talk to me, you can. I was overwhelmed by the response I got last time. And I'll put links to phone numbers, websites, books, <clears throat> all those sorts of things. And um, just be strong, because you're not alone. And um, I'm here with you, and I'm fighting it every day as well. And together, together we will fight it, and we'll, we'll, we'll win. <clears throat> And just remember as well, there are a lot more nice people in the world than there are bad. Even though I know we hear in the news every day, you know, this person has done this to this person, this person has done this to this person. But there are a lot more nice people in the world than there are bad people. People that can help you, people that want to help you. You never have to struggle with it on your own ever. So, um, yeah, thank you for watching. I'm sorry that this video was so long. And um, I'll see you all in my next video. I love you all lots. And thank you for sticking by me and not judging me on this matter. I, 
I really appreciate it. It means it means a lot to me. Um, I'm probably going to have to have a cry now. But um, thank you. So, um, yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.